Hello, Theodora. <clears throat> Hello. Thank you for coming back again to speak with us once again about wireless radiation. Great. I am excited to be here again. Thank you so much for putting this on. Great. Um, why don't you give us a quick update on what you've been up to for the last year and a little bit just about your background to get everyone up to speed on, on what you do and what you've been doing. Great. So I'm executive director of Environmental Health Trust. We're a scientific think tank focused on prevention and healthy living and also educating policymakers, the public, and changing laws to be more protective in regards to all of these preventable health issues that have to do with lifestyle or toxic exposures, environmental health exposures like air pollution, and our current focus is on wireless radiation. So that includes uh, cell phones, Wi-Fi, 5G, cell towers, all of the smart, quote unquote, or not so smart devices that were surrounded by that, that type of radiation. And what we've been up to is really addressing accountability at the federal level and calling for accountability with the uh, U.S. government. We sued the FCC in 19, um, sorry, 1996 is when the limits were set for wireless radiation, but we sued them in uh, 2020 when they decided to keep limits which were set in 1996 about how much radiation you're allowed to be exposed to from your phone, your cell phone, and so forth. And we had a favorable ruling. So the U.S. Court of Appeals, second highest court in the land, uh, determined that uh, the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission had acted in an arbitrary and capricious manner when they decided to keep their stale, outdated, antiquated 1996 limits because they had ignored science showing impacts to memory, uh, damage to reproduction, in children's unique vulnerability, the impact of long-term exposure, and also impacts to wildlife, birds, bees, and trees. And they have not responded to the court. The court actually mandated that they respond showing how these limits from 1996 apply to all the issues I just addressed, and they haven't responded. So we have been not only educating the public and um, you know, trying to, to get people aware of this issue that most people aren't, but also we've been filing with the federal government, calling on them to respond in a way that shows they've fully reviewed the issue. We want the agencies that are supposed to be doing their jobs to do their jobs, like the Environmental Protection Agency, uh, the FDA, and the uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, the Department of Labor, all of these agencies, and the CDC, which, by the way, has uh, is revamping its web pages. We've learned with the grant to uh, a group that is led by wireless industry consultants. So that's what we've been working on: is government accountability, educating the public, and meeting with policymakers to educate them so that they can. Uh, you know, really hold our government agencies accountable. So if we could just look at your website for a second, there's a, a section there on env an environmental health trust called key issues. Can we just click on that and just see what's under there? So sure. safe technology, breast cancer environment, 5G cell phones, Wi-Fi schools, cell towers. Okay. So um, Anything you want to say quickly about those key issues? We'll go into them in more detail, but is there anything more um, about anything briefly you want to tell us about these issues? Well, I'm really glad you pulled up the site. So it's at ehtrust.org, and we want this to be a resource for people to learn about, like, um, let's start with breast cancer and cell phones. If you hover over breast cancer in the environment, you can both go there or you can go to the side, which is specifically about phones. So there is published research, uh, both case reports and also um, a study that looked at women who use the cell phone ne next to their breast or put it in their bra that links uh, the expo that kind of exposure to breast cancer. And we have a campaign to keep make your bra no cell phone zone. 
is that simple because the phone emits radiation all the time, even when you're not using it. So you want to have the phone not in body contact. Uh, and a lot of times women will put the phone in their bra, you know, go out on the town or they'll have ear AirPods in or some kind of speaker in the car, but the phone is actually radiating and the your tissue absorbs that radiation and it is linked to uh, de the development of cancer. Now there's, there are, there's science indicating that people that use cell phones heavily with the cell phone to the head um, have higher risks for types of brain cancer as well. So this is just, um, that's, that's what that web page is about. And there's also, if you scroll down on it, there's, you can go deeper and deeper in if you want more and more research. And that's Dr. Deborah Davis, our president speaking at the University of Melbourne uh, on the issue. And if you scroll down a little bit more, you can hear some stories of young women uh, and women who had the cell phone in their bra and developed breast cancer. And that's uh, Tiffany Franz is, um, she's on the right side there. Unfortunately, sadly, she passed away. Um, but before she did, she spoke out on this so much. And her mother developed a PowerPoint to educate high schoolers. And that's what the, the graphic a little bit below there is. It says no phone zone. Um, that was a slideshow presented to parents to, I mean, I'm sorry, to students in high school that that um, her, her mother developed to educate the kids. And Tiffany was so kind uh, and courageous in speaking out. And she also had allowed images um, from, from her scans to really show students why they should be careful with the cell phone. So those are all resources and there's even more below, but I don't know if we have time for all that, but there's, you can click on those and, and learn more. Um, if you wanna go deep dive, <laughs> sometimes people wanna just, you know, jump in the rabbit hole and, and our website is a rabbit hole in that way. <laughs> okay, so thank you. So everyone can go to Environmental Health Trust. I see you have a donate button. How are you guys doing? Do you guys have enough money to take action against the FCC and to properly educate people? Is it easy to get donations? How, how is wow. it going? <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, yeah, we we um, are a nonprofit. We, you know, we have funding, but we need more funding to do this work. So we are about to launch a couple campaigns that we're working on and they are going to require the support. We know whatever you can give, if it is donating money, if it is donating your time, if it is educating others, um, we, you know, come, please come and join us and contact us for presentations. Donate if you can, it really makes a difference. So we use, um, our money towards all of these efforts. You can go on our website and see everything that we're up to. In fact, yesterday, we actually, yeah, no, I'm sorry. It was uh, Monday. We presented to the National Spectrum Association on this is issue. Those are the spectrum managers. We, um, we are just working every day to fix this. So okay, that's, that's what we're trying to do. Raise awareness. So you're not like me who went, what cell phone? Wait, radiation? Like I didn't even know my phone emitted radiation. Now I guess it's over a decade ago, but I'm glad I know now. And we need to get the word out about how to fix this. Oh, the one other thing that we're working on is, you know, supporting uh, companies understanding what they need to do to fix this because this isn't just going to be about uh, consumers or the government, but also industry needs to step up to the plate and do the research and design possible to make uh, safer electronics and technology and so that we can not need so much wireless. I mean, there, there really are ways, there are a lot of solutions here, but instead the world's gone all wireless all the time, which just doesn't make any sense. Okay. So in general, a lot of people are very rational. If you polled our audience right now, 
They will not walk up to a stove and put their finger and burn themselves. They will not drop a bowling ball on their foot. Uh, many of them don't eat sugar and processed food and fried food and animal products. Mm -hmm. They're all making very good rational decisions. But if you talked about wireless radiation, you know, a lot of them would just kind of say, well, I don't, you know, I don't know, they'd blow it off. They wouldn't think it's a very serious issue. So the question is, why um, do so many people believe that eating animal products or sugar or processed food is a health concern, but wireless radiation is frivolous. It's not a real health concern. Maybe in, if you did it for a very, very long time, but they don't really believe it. So is there any hardcore scientific data that is perfectly clear that using a cell phone up to your head or leaving it in, in your in your bra or putting it in your pocket, um, that there are real clear absolute health issues and, and documented science that says that we really have a health concern if we expose ourselves to this a lot. Is, is there data that you can point to that confirms there this? Is, there is so much data that is as clear as a bell that there are effects found at levels below the thresholds that the government set, like what the government says is safe, just like with food or pesticides, um, you know, is, is absolutely inaccurate. It's false. There's false, uh, a false safety sense of safety. So I too, I was um, mostly healthy eater. I've become much more healthy since I jumped into this and learned how, uh, you know, if you can buy it off the shelf, it doesn't mean it's safe. Um, and it's the same thing with this issue. So the, just to give you an example about what is clear. So the way, and maybe this will help when cell phone, like cell phones, it's not on, but you know, cell phones can, um, they emit radiation, right? And they emit microwave radiation, microwaves. So when when the when the the scientists that decided to investigate this and there was there was years of research into this by entities which were a, a lot were military uh the military was very involved because of radar and there was a lot of work done um by you know related to military applications and they decided that heating was the only harm based on studies where it was just a few small animals I'm talking about about un, about under 20, maybe it was 22, like a, a few monkeys, a few rats, where they did these studies where they starved them so they would be hungry with the rodents, and then they uh, had taught them so that they could tap a leather leather a lever for food, and they tapped the lever to get the food, and they knew how to do that. They'd been trained to do that, and then they turn on the microwaves, and oh, and they also had. They put them in an experimental setup where they had a thermometer. They called it a colonic thermometer. So you know where the thermometer is, right? Keeping the temperature of the animal. They turned on the microwave. They did exposures for under an hour. Microwave exposures for under an hour at very high levels. When it got so high that the little mice or rat didn't press that lever for food, that's when they decided, oh, that, that's too hot. We can't let it go that hot. And that is how the determination was made that heating is the harm, that there's this level, when it goes above this level, when you're, you're overheated to a certain level, that's bad. That is how our limits are set based on that. 